Well, I'm Chris and this is my diagnosing a GM three wire alternator video. So whenever you get a vehicle that's not inspected and on the road, you need to check the alternator out no matter what, even if it appears to be charging and starting up just fine, because you never know what you're going to find. Let's see what this one does. So this is one of those engines that was rebuilt and looking at the alternator on there, you really can't tell if it's five years old or if it's 25 years old. So starting it up every now and then, to move it around the yard i had not noticed the battery getting weak so i assumed that everything was fine the alternator is good and charging let's check this out this is my 1980 c30 dually build i got plenty of videos on it go check them out videos on that semi conversion go check them out so you can see it starts up just fine the battery has plenty of starting power first thing you want to do is you want to check the voltage on your battery shut the engine off check the voltage at the battery and then start it up and check it again So look up the range for your alternator. I think this one's 13.5 through 15.2, but I usually have them charge around 13 to about 14 and a half. That's the range I've always experienced. This is the first time I've had it over. And if it's high like that, you need to shut it off and figure out what's going on. So do we need to replace that alternator? Not exactly. We need to check some stuff first. Okay, so on these GM three wire alternators, you're gonna have one, two, one is the exciter wire and number two is voltage sensing. In this case, since we're overcharging the voltage sensing, this red one on this C30 should actually be going back to 12 volts somewhere. So we could possibly have on that little junction block right there, a blown fuse or blown a fusible link or something. It's not sending 12 volts back to it. But first we need to start with the basics and just clean those wires off. All right, so right now we are only concerned with wire number two, voltage sensing. So position one is the exciter wire. And when we cranked it up, it would not have even started charging in the first place. So we know that the number one position is good. We clean the number two voltage sensing wire off and we know it's gonna start up and charge, but now we're looking for it to charge in that normal range. All right, so that just took a freaking hour. The carburetor, the ethanol phase separated. That's why the freaking thing wouldn't run. I'm gonna upload a video right next to this one. Go check it out. All right, so this video started out with a multimeter and now look, we have to take the carburetor apart. Look at all this stuff. This is why things are always messy in my videos. When people really work on cars, they are gonna have their tools out that they use to fix the problem that we just did. We don't just sit there and point and blah, 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 blah. Look at me, look at me. We don't do that. We get it fixed. Let's get back to this alternator. So now the truck runs again. We can get back to the video. So we took number two and cleaned it off and we're trying to see if the alternator is going to start charging back to normal. Remember, it was charging like 16 volts. So let's check that out. Oh, no, no good. So what we need to do now is we need to find out if wire number two actually makes it back to this battery. Because it could have a fuse link or a fuse blown. Let's check that out. Very simple test. All right, so on your multimeter, you're looking for the diode for continuity. That's only allowing the electricity to flow in one direction. We're just checking from number two to positive on the battery. We're looking for no resistance. Okay, no resistance. All right, we need to take that number two red wire out and clean it up. I forgot how to fucking do this. I need to go watch my videos. Good God, look at all that sh crap on there. All right, so when you're working on this stuff, you need to be super careful. That thing is connected straight to the battery, so we need to unhook our negative side post. Okay. So the test we're going to do now, we're just going to hook that straight to number two. Either way. Okay. So 
like I say in my other videos, number one does not even have to be hooked up for this to work, but you have to rev your engine up a little bit, usually about 2000 RPMs to get it to start charging. So whenever we start this up, it's not gonna charge the battery until we rev it and then it's gonna start charging. And hopefully since we have number two cleaned, it's gonna charge within that range under 15 volts or whatever. Let's check it out. This is not a normal situation. This should not be working like this. Number one, it should not be instantly charging. And number two, it should not be charging that high. So that alternator right there is bad. I'm gonna go buy an alternator. I'll be right back. So factory wiring on his GM vehicles, you're allowed to go 75 amp max. This is a factory 63 amp, but they do, listed for this vehicle, have a 73 amp, but you have to order it. I'm in a hurry and I really don't care, so I just went with a 63 amp, which is fine. Alright, just make sure it's a 10SI and make sure it's clocked the same, lugs the same, pulleys the same, hopefully. Remember, you got to transfer the spacer and go ahead and keep stuff like this as spares. You don't have to give that back on the core. You actually want to put it on before you tighten this bolt. What the fuck are they doing over there? Fucking shit, fucking bird out of the trees. Hey, y'all need to quit that shit, man. Stupid motherfuckers. So if any of y'all know about the law, these fucking dumbass motherfuckers back there are shooting birds with a pellet gun and just kill that innocent bird for no reason. Y'all let me know if that's a freaking crime. I'm cool with that guy, but that's bullshit. So we should be able to hook the battery back up, start it up, and it should charge normally. So with the new alternator, it should just instantly start charging in between about 13 and a half and 14 to or 15 to whatever. Let's check it out. All right, it's looking so much better. I'm so glad I checked that out. I've never had one charge that high. Somebody let me know what that would have done. Would it have burned the battery up, catch on fire? I have no idea, but I'm glad I checked it out. I have a bunch of videos going over different things with those alternators, so check them out or ask me if you have a question. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.